to measure. So we said that the weak star topology, which you can actually describe um, in terms of uh, geometry, uh, two two probability measure are close to uh, are close to each other. If if uh, yeah, you have a high high chance to choose uh, uh, something that a metric space that looks very similar to each other. So if you're used to that uh, for in for graphs, uh, <clears throat> okay. So at least there's no time uh, to, to to understand it in detail now. Uh, but uh, I just tell you it's the same it's it, it's the same space as IRS. So, so there is there is this map uh, from sub G to uh, Benjamin Schramm of X, where X is, is the symmetric space of G. Uh, it sent the sent gamma called <laughs> x mod gamma, and here there is a special. You pick a special point here, so you get a special point here. Uh, you pick the origin of the symmetric space, which was called to the compact group K, and uh, and then uh, you you get a, this gives you a map from IRS of G to uh, the space Benjamin is run of X. So maybe in the first line it's like M of X, it's like the space of all, not all, all measures. This is a map from X manifolds. Like from sub G, you get a map to all. From sub G, I get to X spaces. To X to X manifold, you point at X manifold. This is an X manifold. Above it, it's a B. So, like, not B as of X, but just X. Thanks. This X manifold. Thank you. And uh, and now I get a map to, to with a mini shrine. So, every measure corresponds to a probability measure to, to pick a pointed random uh, X manifold. And, uh, <clears throat> okay. And now, uh, Considering that topology, um, I have a question. Yeah, what is it? X manifold. X manifold is a manifold, and X manifold is just a manifold of the form X mod gamma or X or G mod K mod gamma. So if uh, if G is a S S O two one. Uh, then X is H2, and the next manifold is just a topology. Uh, if G is S to C, then uh, X is H3, and then and then X manifold is, is a topology three manifold. And uh, every <laughs> IRS in G gives you a random X manifold, a random pointed X manifold. You can also say that an X manifold is just a manifold locally isometric to X, right? Yeah, it's so maybe it's less. Yeah, and X manifold is that is a manifold locally isometric to X. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yesterday I demonstrated you that you uh, using IRS on, on X, not on X on X. Yesterday, I explained that using IRSs, uh, we can uh, prove results about lattices, and I will show you how easily you can prove the example of Woolley's theorem. Now, I want to demonstrate how using IRS, we can prove new results, things that we didn't know about lattices, and that's uh, uh, the theorem of, uh, of the seven samurai. Uh, the seven samurai theorem tells us that uh, uh, if X is an irreducible, X is an irreducible, uh, or, or let's say if G is a, is a, is a simple group of uh, rank at least two, G is a simple group, Lee group. Of rank at least two, and X is the G mod K, the symmetric space. Uh, and if uh, MN 
r x mod gamma n r x manifold uh, with volume go to infinity volume of m n is finite and volume f m n goes to infinity so in the sense they take sequence of lattices with larger and larger volume, but they're all lattices so these are all arithmetic manifolds you know so in high hand so uh, uh, then then the volume then for every r the volume of the r thick part I will recall you what it is uh, divided by the volume of M uh, tends to one. So let me remind you what is the volume of uh, the half thick part. Uh, you decompose the manifold to thin part and thin, thick part is something that we uh, like. Uh, uh in geometry we like to do for with small r like the uh, r is really small like, uh, more than one good is constant but uh, here we do it for large r so so the thick part the r thick part m and greater than equal to r is the, the union of is the set of all points inside M for which the ball of values R uh, is injected, is contractible. So in the picture, uh, uh, so you see, uh, if, if, if R is, is that small, so this is the R thin R. And, and this is the R thick part. So here you can in, inject a uh, ball of radius R uh, for the big star. But, uh, but the, this theorem tells us that this is true for every R. So you can take R very large, like 1000. Something like that cannot happen. In particular, it was not known before that the, the R thick part is non empty. So, a priori, uh, there can be a sequence of manifolds that the volume goes to infinity, but they stay uniformly slim, uniformly with bounded intuitive radius, like we, like we had in ANC1, like a parabolic manifold, which is the inductivity radius is all, everywhere smaller than some fixed number. Uh, this cannot happen in higher rank. In higher rank, as a consequence of the seven samurai theorem, uh, oh, I didn't write the name. I will. Um, but the consequence is that so the name is uh, Miklos Abel, uh, Nicola Bergeron, Ian Biringer, uh, myself, now uh, Nick Nicolo. Uh, uh, Jean Rambal and Ido Sam. Okay. Who came up with the name? Sorry? Who, which, which one of the, or who came up with the name? Seven, seven, I'm already eight. from the <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, uh, we, we, we put it, uh, so we first met in Paris for one week and when we proved the amazing, and then a few months later we, we met in, in, uh, in Budapest for another week and we, we proved this theorem. And then I gave the, the first lecture about this, and I had two jokes uh, in that lecture. One of them is that I call it the seven summer I think, uh, result. But the other is, uh, yeah, maybe I'll get to it in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes. Uh, actually, someone told me that uh, it's very potential, so why not the seven dwarfs? <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, it's good, you know, right? uh, <clears throat> and yeah, we tell us that the uh, manifold of uh, of large volume and higher rank 
must have the Arctic part, and actually they look, they become fatter and fatter. So, so they become like, a, like more like a whale. <laughs> That's how you should imagine a medical plant. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, so, so they look very, very fat almost everywhere. And uh, the way to prove it is by using this, uh, uh, using a uh, 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 Stuck Zimmer tune. Uh, <clears throat> yes, so, so, uh, uh, so yeah, may, maybe before I, I get to the proof, I will tell you uh, the other joke. Uh, from that, uh, so so one, one, why is it good this result? Because uh, one corollary, uh, which is related to to Damian's uh, uh, talk, is a generalization or extension of uh, the loop approximation theorem. It tells us that that, uh, that uh, for every k, uh, the Betty number of mn divided by the volume of mn tends to a limit and this limit is uh, well denoted by beta k of g and we call it the l2 betty number uh, l2 betty number of g so it's not it's defined if you fix the how measure uh, anyhow it's something computable and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, okay, my other joke was about the fact that this, uh, this is always zero. Uh, it's true, big, big, big K of G is zero, except uh, in the middle, uh, middle dimension. Yeah, so, so, so all the betting, all. So, so if you want the Betty number of high rank manifold are sublinear, except maybe in the middle dimension, and then you know where you converge. So, so, so I, I say that uh, except the middle dimension. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Anyhow, so, so uh, how do you prove uh, such a result? So, so, uh, so the idea is to look at the simultaneously at the, at the IRS, uh, uh, at the notion of IRS and the notion of Benjamini Schramm uh, space and the uh, interplay between them. So, uh, So, uh, yeah. So, uh, so suppose uh, so so let uh, so actually what we prove is the following. So let uh, uh, gamma n be the lattices. So so m n of the manifold x mod gamma n, and then you consider a new n to be just a uh, the corresponding higher axis. Then a uh, new gamma n converge to a limit. The weak star topology is a, is a, is a, is a compact uh, uh, metric space. A, a compact, the weak star topology is a, is a compact space. So the IRS new gamma converts to a limit mu. Uh, because of subsequence? Yeah, in, uh, up to going to subsequence, uh, taking the subsequence or subnet. But at the end, you don't need to do that because we show, uh, we show that uh, mu, the limit is Dirac and the identity. So the only way, if you take uh, IRS for a to lattices, they converge to the Dirac mass at the identity. So, uh, so first, there is a limit because of compactness. 
and uh, the limit what can be the limit by by so so that so that's a theorem and i claim that this is exactly the same as this theorem if you ch change the interpretation between uh, measures on the space of subgroups to measure on pointed manifold the weak star topology here corresponds to the binomial sham topology here and, and this is how you interpret this theorem so so you get a uh, measure that's supported and on, on subgroup and they correspond to one manifold to say so what is the what is the a manifold that corresponds to the trivial group is x, is the symmetric space. And what, what does it mean that the sequence of a measure on pointed manifold converts to the, to the symmetric space? It exactly means that they become thicker and thicker and thicker in, a, in average. So that's exactly what it means if you interpret it. So, uh, so basically, this is what we need to prove. <coughs> Um, so by the stuck zimmer theorem, so first, first uh, we claim that uh, uh, first mu is ergodic. So this is a, a theorem of uh, 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 Gladner and Weiss. It's not a hard theorem, but it's a classical theorem. So if you have a group with Kajdan property T, so who who knows what Kajdan property T? A lot of people. I think a lot of the students don't know. Sorry. All right, so so so, so uh, maybe Gil will tell you a bit about it because that, you know, it's, it's really important. Yeah. Is, is one of the one of the two most important analytic properties of the group. So so uh, so uh, so but, but once you know what is Kastan property T, then it's not how to prove that the limit of ergodic measures is ergodic. So so uh, so mu is uh, the limit of so because they are ergodic, they are transitive, so mu is also so uh, so then Stuck Zimmer. Which I just uh, mentioned implies that mu is either uh, mu is either Dirac on G, Dirac on the trivial group, or mu gamma for some lattice. So uh, that's all the ergodic IRS is in G. Either the rack on the trivial group, either you fit it at probability one, the, 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 the full group, or the trivial group, or it's a random choice of a conjugate of the even if it's a, that's all the all the choices of the ergodic IRS in G. This cannot happen because G is isolated. I already told you yesterday G is isolated, uh, so it, it you cannot convert it. This is what we want. So we have to show that you cannot you cannot do that. Okay. And this is also a consequence of property T. So, so if you don't property and you know that uh, property T is a wonderful uh, tool to, for instance, to construct expanders. Uh, and uh, the reason is because uh, the interpretation of uh, property T uh, with a Chigel constant. So, uh, so if I start to speak uh, Hebrew, uh, then then tell me or, or Hungarian, uh, then uh, so 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 if G, if if uh, G has property T. So every so actually G has property T by Kashtan theorem. That's Kashtan theorem. Therefore, uh, there is a lower bound on the Chigel constant of uh, the for any for any X manifold 
uh, and the Chigel constant is bigger than epsilon zero. This is the uniform bound. In a sense, uh, what is the Chigel constant? Uh, Thank you. For any Chigel, for any, for any, for, so what is the Chigel constant? So you take a manifold. So if you remember how you, uh, probably most of you know what is expanded graph, right? So no. So uh, so uh, so you take a matrix, consider a manifold, and you ask yourself how how much do I have to pay in order to cut it to a disconnected manifold, and then you 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 look at the volume of this thing, uh, and and you look at the volume of of uh, of the of uh, of you, you look at the, the Chigel constant is the is the volume of the cut divided by the volume of the smallest, the small, the volume of the uh, larger side. You look at the vo the, uh, the volume of the smaller side. Yeah, the Chigel constant is the infimum of the volume of the, of the cut uh, divided by the volume of the uh, the smallest, smaller, smaller half. Smaller half. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll write it. Uh, maybe I'll write something precisely in a moment. So, so let, let me finish the proof and then come back to detail. So basically, uh, uh, in a, in a in a group, if a group G has property T and it acts. And, and this is how I think of G mod gamma or G mod K mod gamma. So you cannot cut G mod K mod gamma to, to, to two pieces uh, of large volume by paying a small price. That's, a, that's, that's basically poverty. That's one of the uh, versions to state poverty. There are various uh, equivalent definitions. And to say that the Chi constant is positive, there is a lower bound for that over all manifolds. Okay. Now, uh, uh, now this group uh, uh, G is probably this. So I have a sequence of manifolds. Uh, think of them as random manifolds. Or IRSs that converge to mu, and I want to show that uh, uh, this mu cannot be a uh, mu gamma. So, so if the limit is mu gamma for a lattice gamma, So, so what can it be? So, so, so we can we can picture what, what does it mean? So this is so this is M. So this is M, which is X mod gamma, and uh, and my random pointed manifold is just random point on M. That's the meaning of this is mu gamma mu mu gamma corresponds to random point of, of inside M. So I it just I have the same manifold and I look at a random point inside M. But uh, but uh, mu n converts to that. What does it mean that mu n converts to that? It means that in mu n, a ran mu n is also a random manifold, and I also, if I pick a random point in mu n, I see something similar to what I see here. That's a benefit of topology. If I take take a, a random point in m n, I will see something similar in that picture. So here. So here is a problem. So if so, if this manifold has finite volume, it's either compact or maybe it has a cast. Anyhow, if you cut, if you look at the large ball here, uh, the boundary of a large ball must have a small volume because the volume goes to zero if I go to infinity. Maybe it is zero if the manifold is compact. But that's not a contradiction because the, this half will have smaller smaller volume. So it will not contradict the constant. But uh, <clears throat> But you see, the volume of mn goes to infinity. 
So in MN, in MN, I see something in MN, we see, we see a, a similar picture. So we see, we see, we also see this, uh, this with, with some probability, we see the same picture. But the MN, as the volume of MN goes to infinity, so it's, it, it becomes much larger than the volume of M. So in MN, there must be something on that side as well, because the volume goes to infinity. So in MN, you will see that picture, but there is also, the other side will be at least as big as that at some point. So this will contradict the, the property. We say have a small cut that cuts the manifold to two large pieces. That's contradicting property. Theory. <coughs> okay. So if you look at the paper, it's written over many pages because uh, there are details, and I try to simplify too much. Uh, if you didn't understand that, so uh, let me just tell you that once I gave the similar lecture in, in Paris and, and Sullivan was in the crowd, and after I gave this explanation, he asked me, can you explain it better? <laughs> and I said, no. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, so, so there are details that uh, maybe are oversimplifying, uh, but that's the idea, if, um, yeah. So, uh, so uh, you can ask questions, and uh, if not, uh, basically, I think this is the this is the this is the proof that uh, IRS is a good notion because we say we can say you can prove new results about lattices, about arithmetic groups, and this is a, a object of a great. Uh, interest so so people from uh, number theory from automorphic form for from different areas in mathematics were, were interested in in applications that uh, we generalize in this world and uh, and the idea was the new the main new idea was to apply this irs and benjamin Schramm and and uh, and combined with rigidity theory and uh, so irs is uh, indeed a, a useful tool however uh, as I said at the beginning of, of yesterday's talk, uh, invariant measures are not so much natural when we consider uh, non amenable groups. And indeed, the uh, Stuck Zimmer tell us that uh, if you want to investigate uh, thin groups, groups of infinite limits, manifold of infinite volume, don't look at IRS. IRS are only for lattices. Every IRS is supported only on lattices. You cannot say anything about. Thin subgroup about subgroup infinite index in S and Z, and there is a great interest in understanding these uh, these groups. And the uh, IRS will not give you anything there. So we should look at uh, more general measures. And uh, and uh, so tomorrow uh, we will start to talk about uh, stationary random subgroups. So and this is a much more general notion. So so if today I know that today uh, talk uh, was not so clear. Uh, uh, because I was interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I was I, I very uh, uh, detailed there. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, sorry. Yeah, so it was, but tomorrow will be independent. Tomorrow I'll speak about, so these are all the results. So the seven samurai works, uh, um, maybe it was published in, in 2017, but it was proved in 2011 and 2012, and the the announcement was so, so was archive uh, was there. So so that's all the results, and uh, and uh, tomorrow we speak about second random swap sample, which is the notion that only recently people started to to look at. So okay. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions or comments? Is that is that thin part in M happy because it's higher rank? Right? 
Sorry? Does that the product doesn't open because it's higher rate? Is that the same power? Is that because it's higher rate? Uh, <laughs> you ask, uh, I don't understand the question. <laughs> so why, why do you have like this? You have uh, two set parts over there, but you don't have. Ah, no, no. The thin part is just because this manifold is compact. It is a, this manifold is a finite volume. So it cannot be it cannot be thick if we go far, too far because then it, it each each thick part contributes an amount of to the volume. It, it, since the volume is finite, it's either compact and it's it's end somewhere just because it's finite volume. This is not this is not because it's higher. Okay. No, this is your question is why don't you have the same feature on the left? Ah, because, because here the volume, here the volume is bounded. Here the yeah. volume is some vo is some number is some volume of n is some number. But here, uh, volume of Fn is another number which goes to infinity. So, it, so if this number is, say, 1,000, at some point, this will be bigger than 2,000. So you, we, the, other, the other side will be bigger. So then you get contradiction. Nice. So to follow up. So you just use the high rank to use that as property sheet. I use I use high rank uh, for for several things. So property T was used three times in the proof. Uh, once it is used in this trigger constant assumption, but you have also rank one group with property T like SPN one. But it also you was used in the Stokes Zimmer theorem. Stokes Zimmer theorem rely on property T. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite problem is to prove an analog of Stokes Zimmer. To higher rank group without probability, like SL2 times SL2. So, so it's not known. So, so, uh, so that's another place where we use probability. And, and another place we use probability is in this uh, Glasner Weiss theorem that limits a symbolic measure. So, probability used three times, higher rank was also used. But, but it's higher rank, it implies property T and then property T implies all these things. Higher rank plus simplicity implies probability. Higher. I am semi simple, not necessarily a problem. Like SL2R okay. times SL2R is higher rank, but, uh, but it's, it doesn't have problem here. But SPN1 times SPN1 is both higher rank and has probability T. For, so for many people to do that, we still have it. Yeah, so we need both higher rank and probability T. Mm -hmm. So what, maybe this is going to uh, wait, but so what, what's missing? About this analog of or generalization of Snoop Zimmer, because it so it, it's known. Margulis result is right. You know, that's it. That's a yeah. So as, as I mentioned, the Stuck Zimmer something like maybe the, the right thing is to call it Nevo Stuck Zimmer because uh, historically Stuck Zimmer uh, Stuck Zimmer it's an analyst paper without with no mistakes, but it relies heavily on an earlier paper of uh, of uh, Zimmer uh, uh, intermediate factor theorem that uh, had mistake, which was corrected in a later paper by uh, uh, Nevo and Zimmer, uh, and uh, and uh, anyhow, so 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 uh, uh, Stuck Zimmer. Theorem, it's a generalization of Margulis normal subgroup theorem. Margulis normal subgroup theorems also applies. So it is, is a wonderful open problem. So as you said, so 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 in the hierarchy there is a, a Margulis normal subgroup theorem, and this theorem is is implied by a Stokes Zimmer. Let's call it the Vosco Zimmer because it's a little bit of So, so the Vosco Zimmer implies that, but this is more general. This is more general in the sense that this holds in higher rank because Mongolis prove all cases always, and uh, and this is the uh, and this is higher rank and plus t. They need property t. In a sense, Margulis, if you know Margulis to simplify, to oversimplify Margulis normal subgroup, you prove that if gamma is the lattice in higher rank and n is a normal subgroup, then gamma mod n is both amenable and admits probability t, and therefore it must be fine. When, when g is probability t, the t part it gets for free. Uh, 
when G doesn't have probability, he has to to work uh, and uh, he has to work uh, very sophisticatedly, and and uh, and he knows how to do that. So so there is a so so Margulis uh, also applies uh, this applies also uh, to uh, lattices in SL two R times SL two R. To uh, for instance SL two and z square root of two. If you so, this is an example of an irreducible lattice in SL two R times SL two R. And the normal subgroup theorem is true also for that lattice. So every normal subgroup is a finite index. Uh, all, but this lattice uh, does this group is no doesn't have property here. Therefore, my rule says to work harder. So it's really a harder proof. And uh, I have to admit, I still don't really. Uh, I, Okay, we, uh, it's how to understand really what's going. On. Every little there, it's an, it's you can follow, but but what's really going on there? It's quite uh, um, deep, and uh, here we don't have this replacement. So you you can the conjecture is that, uh, for instance, that every IRS in that group is also supported on a finite index subgroup, or more generally, if you have a PNP action of SL2R times SL2R such that each factor acts ergodically. Or like irreducible PMP action, then it's supported on lattices. So that's the analog of sub zero that I think everybody believes should be true. Uh, because most things that we can prove for higher rank, that people can, could prove for higher rank, also holds uh, without property, like arithmeticity and uh, superability and, uh, and uh, normal sum of theorem, etc. But sub zero is not me. And uh, yeah, I think it's. Uh, it's it's yeah it's something interesting yeah does a mar marvelous normal subgroup theorem also hold for uh, any any uh, subgroup that contains a lattice or is it just for lattices? What a subgroup? Uh, uh, what do you mean? A subgroup that contains a lattice is a lattice. I mean, this, what do you mean? Uh, it, it's always discrete. Yeah. Yeah, discrete. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have a subgroup of G that contains a lattice, yeah. Uh, Ah, but then it's not closed subgroup. Right? If it's closed and contains a lattice, then it's either a lattice and contains that lattice for finite index, or it's dense subgroup. Uh, and dense subgroup could be no. For dense subgroup, you cannot say yes. So you say it doesn't hold? Uh, do I have a counterexample? Uh, <laughs> So, uh, and show the free then? So, no, you can't be both free and contain lattice. I'm sure, it, uh, probably okay. not. Let, let's uh, right. uh, um, yeah, what about, yeah, probably we can put the example. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, and, uh, but of course, uh, maybe one should mention that uh, Margulis had to work hard for the product case without probability, the but then. A few years later, Yuda Shalom did it in a much greater generality, and later in a, a, a jointly with Uri Bader, they proved the normal subgroup theorem for, let's say, uniform lattices in order to general local compact group under some conditions. So, so this, uh, so the idea with uh, Bader and Shalom, they proved the generalization that also holds for SL2R and SL2R, but again, their method, uh, it doesn't seem that you can apply for Stugnil. Yes. Thank you.